Hello everyone, welcome to this latest CIS roundtable devoted this month to the extremely important and, dare I say, delicious subject of sustainable food. I'm Vicky, um, I am a, a primary school teacher and also the sustainability coordinator for the school. So I work with Green Team and Ditto as well. Uh, hi, I'm Nadia, I'm in CIS Year 6. Uh, I am my class's Green Team representative. Hi, I'm Ime. I'm in year 12, been here since reception, and I'm a Ditto leader, Ditto being the sustainable group at CIS. I'm Christian <laughs> Yang. Uh, I am an alum and a parent. I am a chef, a uh, TV chef, and a branding specialist for restaurants. My name is Catherine Kuei Shi. I am a parent of two CIS children, and I'm also the president of CISPEDA. And on CISPEDA, we have a number of committees that touch on sustainability, and in particular, I'm on the food committee. Hi, I'm Jerry Zambathi. I'm the Director of Operations at CIS, and in my uh, portfolio is food. What's your own personal reason for caring about the environment? In year eight, I remember walking into like an ENSO class, and then Greta Thunberg's speech which was then delivered to the UN, was like being played in front of the entire class, and I was just blown away. I was entirely shocked by it, because I previously did not have much exposure to you know, the, like, the idea of sustainability or environmental issues. The environment is literally what we live in and what we depend upon, what the entire world depends upon. And one, if it goes wrong, if there's something wrong with it, its implications aren't just limited to one thing. Since I was, um, I think in year six, I was suddenly, we did this topic at school and I was suddenly interested in the world around me and the environment a lot more. I was looking at different recycling systems and as dry as that sounds now, it was so interesting. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, throughout my whole life, I've been looking at how I can personally uh, limit my impact on the world, how I can do little things to make things better. Um, as a teacher I feel like I'm in such a fortunate position to support students and give them some skills. We don't know what the world's going to look like in uh, 10 years time so how can we best help students to have those skills of problem solving and inquiry and things uh, for the future. So When I was in year four uh my my English teacher, Mr. Hummer, was like did a was talking a lot about like uh, like sustainability and like plastic problem, ocean pollution, that kind of thing, and um, that just got me interested. So I think as a parent, I started off at the school not really knowledgeable about mm -hmm. sustainability. It wasn't really you know in the front of my mind, right? So in many ways, my journey in terms of understanding sustainability has mirrored my children's. And I actually think that education and CIS and schools in general are really pioneers or at the forefront of being able to drive that kind of education and change. And so when I started as a CISPEDA GC member, you know, my role is to bridge the school and the parents and to promote kind of mutual understanding. And sustainability went from kind of a minor topic to now basically being one of the most foremost issues of our time. And it went from being a subcommittee where we did a little bit of work to basically being something that pervades all of the decisions we have, we make at CISPEDA. We're here to talk about sustainable food. Can you explain that concept for us? I think the, one of the most important things is it's not just about the environment, it's about our health, it's about our well-being. So our, our mental health, our physical health, our well-being overall is incredibly linked to the health of the planet and the environment. So if we continue eating in the way that we're eating, the environment will be hugely degraded. Uh, there'll be lots of malnutrition. Uh, there will be a huge amount of diseases. And we know that we can change this. We don't have to go down that route. So I think choosing to eat sustainably, perhaps it's a more of a plant-based diet. Maybe some people are doing a whole plant-based diet. Some people are choosing vegan or vegetarian foods. You don't have to do that. You could be a flexitarian, I think is the, the term now. Where it's flexitarian. Less yeah, so it's largely plant-based, but with a small, modest amount of uh, dairy products or meat or fish, mm -hmm. you can still have those. But just a, we all need to work together to change our sort of approach to food and how we eat. I, why I think sustainable food is so important is because, well, two main reasons. First of all, a lot of what, like, how sustainable something is, is kind of quantified by the carbon emissions, right? Because carbon emissions are the basis for like climate change, global warming, and our goal is to reduce emissions. And 
This is a fact that is thrown out quite often, but I would like to share it, is that if the food industry were a country, it would be the third largest emitter. And second of all, I think the sustainable food and taking action in terms of like the food industry is the simplest thing to do. Because if you think about energy, we have all these problems like, oh, how do we um, implement these renewable energy solutions? Oh, solar panels aren't that efficient. We don't have batteries. There's so many problems. But sustainable food, in the end, it comes down, there's a very simple solution, and it just comes down to all of us eating less meat like eating less beef in particular. Eating sustainably is just to avoid these very resource intensive foods. And that's something everyone can do in their everyday life. Right? How straightforward is it actually to be a sustainable eater? I just feel like can, instead of like, we, yes, we need to focus on reducing the carbon emissions, but can we also get legislation to focus on how to find technological solutions to deal with it? I had a recent conversation with Ben and Noya, which is the um, sustainable consultant group that Ditto works with. And basically what they told us and what we found in, like, through research was that the transport and packaging of foods is only accountable for a small portion of their overall emissions. So a lot of the emissions of especially meat-based products such as beef and pork and lamb, they come from actually raising the livestock. And this is where most of the emissions come from. So while it is very difficult to create a perfectly sustainable meal, there's like a lot of problems with bees and whatnot, but to reduce your footprint and to eat more sustainably, I'd say that is quite simple in Hong Kong because all you got to do is just reduce the amount of beef and amount of meat you do. As an individual, what I'm concluding though is that if I measure improvements in terms of what I am doing, you know, in terms of my own contribution to the problem, right, I actually think it is, it is easy to make that 20%, 30%, 40% difference mm -hmm versus my own starting point. Right. And I think by making better choices, by being informed about what kind of emissions you know, are being produced by the choices that I make, yeah. I actually think that we are in a luxury of mm. where we are in Hong Kong and our community to be able to pioneer those choices, right? And set the example. How can we ensure that we have sustainable food at CIS? Christian, you raised the point that we're transporting food from all over the planet here to Hong Kong to, to consume. If we think back 100, even 50 years ago, food wasn't being moved around the planet in the same way that it is now. So um, it's possible to eat more locally. And I think that is something that we should make a commitment to at school to buy local, eat local, provide produce and, and proteins that are available nearby um, that don't require flying across the planet. Um, and of course, we we need we probably need to spend more time educating ourselves, each other, the students, the staff, on making how to make good choices about our nutrition and and choosing foods that that have less of an environmental impact. Primary has a green team, and you're you're a member of that team. I'm wondering, have you all thought a little bit about? how we could have more sustainable food? Yeah, it's actually like a really big topic at Green Team. Like, uh, we were focusing on a plastic packaging, but that comes with a lot of concern towards snack and food packaging. But like, it's just like a lot more convenient because a lot of parents like work a lot and they're really busy. And so like, nice. it's just more convenient for them to just throw in some like, pa some, like plastic packaged foods and she's like going all and going all the trouble to like pour into a snack box. To like feed like the hundreds of students that we do, it's yeah. really difficult to do that without plastic to keep all of our like ingredients, all of our food fresh. But uh, if we have the right resources, I think it can be done. I know that um, Green Team have been talking a lot about single-use plastic and snacks for Primary Green Week coming up. Um, and that's all going to be about sustainable food. And so our challenge from primary green week to the end of the year we're going to see if students can create some or bring in um, plastic free snacks so they'll be healthy um, they will be uh, not processed
How can our community work together to advance the cause of sustainable food at CIS? First place that we can start is, as Jerry mentioned, the school cafeteria, right? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what, what, is on, what is on offer? What's available for access, right? And so I think we, as parents, have partnered with the school. We have this food committee that I mentioned before that consists of parents, staff, students, as well as the cafeteria provider. And our job, you know, what we prioritize is asking questions that focus on sustainability. So things like, you know, are we able to provide more vegetarian options or meat alternatives? Um, how do we reduce the amount of food waste that's being produced? Or what do we do with the food waste? So I think clearly from these efforts, students, parents of school, it really is taking the whole village to make sure our inputs are being heard and we can work together to make tweaks that really do move the needle. On April 22nd, CIS students are going to be organizing a sustainable food summit. Can you please tell us more? The summit is an opportunity for high school students around Hong Kong who care about sustainability to gather in one place and learn from each other as well as sustainability educators and experts. We have three main goals for the summit. The first is we want students to be able to learn from people who have experience in the field, whether that be NGOs or like experts or, and, or like school food providers, because the summit is focused around sustainable school food. Um, secondly, we want students to learn from each other, because most of what Ditto has done from personal experience has been to do with the school, like CIS itself, right? We are installing solar panels on the roof, we're eliminating Tetra Pak from the cafeteria, but these are all limited to um, reducing our own school, like CIS's impact on the environment, right? We aren't engaging with the wider community, but large change needs this community engagement. And so we really wanted to gather all the students in one space where they can share ideas like, oh, your school has done this, our school has done this. Instead of trying to do these things all individually, we can come together and help each other and in the end, help everyone sustainabilize. Right? And the third and arguably most important goal is to enact some real change, right? Some real change that we hope will spark further change along the line. The main like, exciting part of the summit is for lunch. We have invited three chefs who will be preparing sustainable school lunches for all the participating students, right? And then they'll present like, why is this lunch sustainable? What did I include in it? Um, and then the students will vote. There'll be a like panel to judge all the dishes. And in the end, these dishes will be incorporated into the school lunch meals of all the participating schools. So now we have not only you know, gotten students to discuss and learn about sustainable school food, but we've actually gotten um, school food providers to change their menu to be more sustainable. What are the other sorts of things we could be doing as a community as we think ahead and right, dream big for sustainable food at CIS? We're already promoting our like, you know, like single-use plastic, that kind of thing, but I think like it would be possible, though, like, the, um, it may not be the best suggestion, but like, like in green team, we've been discussing like there's been suggestions to just like, like to just create a few loose rules. Like let's say a certain amount of plastic packaged foods to bring to school for snack a day, mm -hmm. instead of having like a pure plastic snack. Oh, as as Nadia was talking earlier about the sort of um, the snacks, um, mm. it's. It's such a quick win, such an easy change. It could be hugely impactful. Uh, something that we've been calling nude food. So having food, right. our snacks, maybe even our lunches without plastic. That's a, mm. one of the changes that we can make very easily. I think flexitarian is, is a great idea. Can we say, right, you know, you got three meals a day, one meal, one meal a day, vegetarian. Mm. Not so far as to go plant-based fully. That's for later on. But just say one, commit to one meal a day. Right? And the same thing with packaging. It's the same, it's the same idea, right? Mm -hmm. Just for, for one meal a day, no packaging. We have to hold our food services feet to the fire, so to speak, not to be sourcing from across the planet. Mm -hmm. We have to be demanding that, that um, ingredients are coming from as close by as possible. And that, that means even our farm which has 
you know, up to this point, not really fed much into our food system here at CIS. Um, it's been more of a showcase and an educational tool, but it actually produces some vegetables which we could be using mm -hmm. and herbs. We are currently, with the school, working to make sure that, you know, whoever our vendors are, they're providing a certain level of vegetarianism. Or, or, or local food, mm. uh, reducing single-use uh, plastics, and you know very quickly that thousand meals a day can transform you know economies because then schools banding together in sustainable summits. Dear participants, thank you very very much for shedding such insight on this important and complex topic of sustainable food. At CIS, we will be doing our utmost to eat ever more sustainably, and in so doing, to take care of our beautiful and delicate planet.